Okay, the record is now on. So let us focus on the example from the active session number two, the first problem on the second page. You see, this is a continuous beam. And we already mentioned the fact that we can use this modified equation to help reduce the unknown. Okay, let me emphasize again that it has to be the simple support, which is at the end of your continuous beam, two conditions, okay, like this one. And please uh, note that uh, in this uh, formula, we call the N support I. And what we try to do here is we try to eliminate the need to calculate theta I. We eliminate theta I, and theta I is not zero. So for those of you who want to eliminate theta i and say theta i is zero, I'll be very, very upset, okay? And by this, we come up with the equation is for mji, okay? Because mij is zero, because mij is zero. Theta i itself is not zero, okay? mij is zero. So we have the equation for mji, which is equal to three, see? Three ei over l, theta j minus three, uh, see that? I make a mistake too, minus sign. For those of you who make mistakes, it's going to be this one or you know that one in front. And another one here, notice that it's F-E-M-J-I minus F-E-M-I-J over two. So let's try to use that with this. Okay, we go back here and you see that if I call this support A, B, and C, you know, A, a and C, they are both simple N. Correct? Means that we can use this uh, modified equation. And so uh, if you are going to identify this, you will know that your unknown, say after modification, is only theta b, okay? And uh, what's my step? Okay, that's uh, zero. Step number one, relative stiffness. Now it's okay, right? Step number two is uh, fix and moment. So I'll make it short because it's just one page and it's pretty short. Now it's WL square over 12, which is, let's do this in tons, three, six square over 12. That's a nine ton meter, okay? So if I select to go with uh, the uh, modified equation, Let's look what, 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 what I'm, I'm gonna have. MBA, it's gonna be it's my, let me try to find the equation so that I don't have to go back and forth between the two slides. Okay. Mm. Where the heck is it? Oh, I thought I rearranged it and then I lost it again. So, pardon me. Okay, it's three E I over L becomes K, right? So it's three E K theta B minus psi. And then for, for MBA, you know, MBA now, uh, I didn't write very uh, clearly here, but you should know MBA is on this side. So it is clockwise, correct? So that's nine. 
Now minus m a b over two, correct? Now this is where people make mistakes a lot when trying to use this. M a b is counterclockwise, so m a b itself is negative. So here you have minus nine over two. That means this is going to become three e k theta b. If you do this as well, psi is zero. And now you have minus minus nine. So this in fact becomes 13.5. Okay. And likewise, because of symmetry, you also have m b c now it's going to be equal to 3 e k theta b minus psi let's do it completely even though we know it's zero now when you look at this m b c itself is negative minus m c b which is neg a positive now so this becomes something like 3 e k theta b minus 13.5, right? So it becomes pretty obvious now, step number four, uh, when you consider your equilibrium um, equation. Sigma m b equal to zero. Now you have something like six e k theta b equal to zero or e k theta b equal to zero. Now, you see the answer now. But if you are brave enough, you see this is the symmetric case with the even number spans, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10, that's even number, right? When it's even and the load is equal like this, you can go ahead and perhaps know that e, oops, sorry. Ah, that's, uh, you don't see that, right? <laughs> because it's sharing your screen. E, O. E, K, theta B itself is zero. And when, when, when you can actually assume that, you know right away that M, B, A or M, A, B is simply the, you know, calculation of fixed moment. Right? So, you know, you can almost answer this instantly that M, BA is equal to 13.5 without doing anything. And MBC is minus 13.5. If you're brave enough to assume that EK theta B is equal to zero from the beginning, if you know that, if you understand the structure. So you, this problem actually can be solved in less than one minute. If you understand what you're doing. Any question? See how easy that is? Question, please. Question, please. No question. Can you explain again where minus 9 over 2 come from? This is from the formula. So I have to go back here. I just, I just did, right? Here, that's a formula. It comes from uh, this mathematical uh, arrangement, okay? Mij and Mji, and you know that Mij is equal to zero. The first equation is equal to zero. So you use Mij and Mji to eliminate theta i. And so you multiply equation number two by two and minus equation number one. That's how we got Femji minus Femij. So when we come back here, this is M Femji or MBA, right? Which is positive here, minus Femab. But M, but FEMAB is negative. So you minus this with a negative number. 
But for BC, you know, MBC, FEMBC is already negative because this is FEMBC, right? It's counterclockwise, so it's negative. And FEMCB, now that's positive, so it stay positive. Okay. So is there any question on this one? And you should realize that in the end, with only two continuous span, you have the maximum moment here. This is exactly WL squared over eight. Because it basically comes from WL squared over 12 plus WL squared over 24, right? See? That's 12, that's 24. So it's WL squared over eight. So you see uh, with uh, a continuous beam with only two spans, a not very beneficial in terms of moment because the maximum moment at this remains WL squared over eight. Okay, um, but it's negative moment now. But if you have more than two spans, the moment is going to be less than WL squared over eight for sure. You know, um, your uh, senior a long time ago, uh, he, he once chatted with me. He went into the interview for a job interview and you know, the engineer over there asked him to solve this beam by using slope deflection. How, how do you do it? <laughs> Do you know how to answer this question? A simple beam, can you use slope deflection to solve it? Anyway, right. So uh, any more question regarding this one? Uh, nothing at all. So we are moving on to this. Now you can see that this is the uh, beam that I have taken from example number two. Okay, I believe so. Let me uh, look here so that. Uh... Uh -huh. Right, where we try to investigate how many unknowns we have, right? And now we know that uh, let's say we, uh, this is a five degree of freedom, okay? With symmetry, we can reduce this to three. That is theta A, theta B, and then theta C. Now with the, uh, I can say symmetry here. Now with the simple and support, it's down to two, right? And if you brave enough to say that, oh, I have this case again, even number of spans, so theta C better be zero. You can actually come down to one unknown. So you see, but good engineers can afford to be lazy. If you understand, if you get the feeling of the structure, your work is down from five equations to just one. You see that? Excuse me for 10 seconds. Okay, can you see that? So it's up to you. If you're not sure about this, this is extreme symmetry, okay? It doesn't work if we have the uh, odd number of spans, say five. But you see, I, I kind of love to do this and you would get the, perhaps the exam like this, our whole work, where if you understand enough, your work will be dramatically reduced. 
if you refuse to understand the behavioral structure, you have a lot of work to do, but you still can do it, but it takes more time and effort because you refuse to use your effort in understanding the structure. So that means you welcome to use the effort on hard work. Okay. So let's just say I am going to use, I'm going to do it just right here. Okay. And then leave it to you that you see that the uh, EK set is be zero. So that implies that this will be called A, B, and C. So let's say our step number zero, the unknowns, will be theta B and theta C. Now remember very carefully that theta A is not zero. But we do not calculate it because MA is zero. And by, by assuming MA is zero, we can eliminate theta A, but it's not zero, okay? So we have two unknowns. Step number one, do you want uh, real numbers? Can somebody tell me the some numbers that we can work with? Perhaps we don't have numbers. How much? Let 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 let's use some friendly number. Okay, don't go crazy. Like your uniform load is going to be equal to pi, for example. Nobody has that. Oh, we have a from the chat. One. One, okay, one is fine. So let's say one ton per meter. But let's say because we are, you know, the formula for, for the uh, fixed end moment is the increment of 12. So may I suggest we are using this span length equal to six meter? That, would that be good enough? We, we get uh, some, some wonderful numbers, okay? Thanks a lot for your suggestion, Pantita. Um, uh, let's say step number one, relative stiffness. Okay, now we, we have different relative stiffness. So you see that uh, K A B is I over six, but K B C is now, 4i over 6. So it's pretty simple that uh, let's say k is equal to i over 6. So this becomes 4k. Oops, 1k, right? What am I doing? And this becomes 4k. Simple as that. Okay. Now the second step is the calculation of fixed moment. Um, I, I did try to quickly, so uh, in the previous example, because I just want to uh, demonstrate the point and that, that problem is extra. So I'm slightly concerned with the time. So that's why I went a little bit too quickly, but let's do it um, better this time. So let's say this is FEMAB. That's gonna be equal to uh, minus WL square over 12. That is going to be um, minus one and six square over 12, six square that's 36. So that comes out to minus three ton per meter. And you can say right away, this is equal to minus FEMBA. Uh, and then FEM, if you want to write BC, that's uh, also minus three ton per meter, which is equal to minus FEMCB. Okay, so we now can go to um, writing slope deflection equations. Okay, now. Uh, Keep in mind that 
when you want to use the modification, when you state here that uh, modification is used, you must use the modified uh, slope deflection equation. Because when you say this, it means that you are implying that you will use that equation to eliminate theta a. So when you don't have theta a, your equation must be the modified one. Another way around is that if you say you don't use modification, theta a must be in your calculation. Now there are two kinds of mistakes really. You say you use modification and yet you include theta a, or you don't use modification and yet you exclude theta a. So understand this very, very clearly. Okay, if modification is going to be used, it means that theta a is out of our consideration because we are going to use the modified equation. If modification is not used, say that A must be considered, otherwise it's a, it's a whole mess of the fundamental concept and you will see the word fatal written in your exam because you completely misunderstand things, okay? So now uh, with this, I can just write my MBA, that's gonna be equal to, Three E K theta B looks like B minus psi, and then because it's MBA, right? So it is the fixed end moment is three minus minus three over two. It's my MBA. And because uh, we don't have any joint displacement, so that is zero. So we have three e k theta b plus four point five, and then you have m b c. Am I correct? Yes, m b c. Now m b c m b a is for the simple end support, correct? And that is your simple end support there. And so you, you can only use this equation for that. For when, M, uh, when you consider MBC, it goes back to normal. So 2E, but you have 4K, right? 2 theta B plus theta C minus 3 psi plus F E M B C that is minus three. So here we have four, four, that's sixteen, right? Sixteen E K theta B plus eight E K theta C minus three m c b now it is two e four k two theta c plus theta b minus three psi plus three right again that is zero and try to be in good fashion. So um, I have to begin with B, right? So that's eight, E, K, Z, B. Plus 16, E, K, Z, C, right? Plus three. And now because we need two equations, we, uh, we did not begin by assuming EK status is equal to zero. So you need to also write MCD. 
That's a two E four K, that's E, right? Now you have two theta C plus theta D minus three psi, but theta D is equal to what? Theta D is equal to what? That is minus theta B, right? And MCD is a minus three, okay? Let me arrange that. So we have um, minus eight EK theta B plus 16 EK theta C minus three. You look at these two equations, you see? You know right away that theta C is gonna come down to zero, right? Simple as that. Okay, so now the next step would be to write uh, our equilibrium equations. So sigma MB equal to zero or MBC plus, I should begin with A, right? MBA plus MBC equal to zero. We go back here. That is um, 19, right? 19 EK theta B plus A EK theta C. Now you have uh, plus 4.5 minus three. So that means it's plus 1.5 equal to zero. Okay, next is sigma MC equal to zero. So it is MCB plus MCD equal to zero. So there you have it. Say the B is gonna go out of the window, right? So you have only E, K, theta C, and that's uh, 32. And that is uh, Z, uh, plus three and minus three. So that is equal to zero, right? <laughs> okay, so it's like a pretty, a pretty blunt effort. So now you know, um, because I don't have a calculator with me. I keep getting it somewhere in the house. And uh, now you can see that this gives you um, EK is equal to zero, right? So go back here. Now you know that um, EK theta B is minus 1.5 over 19. Okay, so now you got everything. You can go back and and uh, put theta b in your equations to obtain your end moments. Okay. See, even if you do not know that ek theta b is supposed to be zero, it's still a very short work. Suppose you know. Suppose you know. Suppose. E K theta C is known to be zero, you are going to end up with just this guy, right? Because you need to solve for theta B. And, but remember, even though your theta C is zero, your MC on both sides are not. Okay, a very simple case to demonstrate that. Um, I should uh, uh, finish here, right? Two equations. Ooh. If 
EKZW. So uh, keep in mind that, um, let's say, if I put a on a structure like this, okay? And I load on both sides equally. Is there a moment here? Moment? Yes or no? Sigma moment is zero, correct? Theta is zero, but still this piece will bend, right? Rotation is zero. The moment here is there not zero, but they are equal and they cancel each other out. So there will be no moment in this column. Correct? So that is pretty simple. And that um, the second example is over. If you want me to finish it, you must help me in the putting this back into calculating MBA and MBC. You want that? Okay, okay what do you mean? It doesn't give me any answer. Yes, let's do it. Chap. Let's do it. So uh, I need help. What, what's MAB? So let's move this uh, somewhere. So we are going to have, what's that? That number five, right? In moments. You may uh, write again here to reassure yourself that MAB is zero, even though there's no need. MBA, how much? Now it is going to be um, three EK set be plus 4.5, right? So it's three multiplied by minus 1.5 over 19 plus 4.5. How much is that? Hey! Wait a minute. Okay. I should go ahead and write. Oh, five, minute. two, six. Plus or minus? Plus. Really? Oh, MBA. Okay. Yeah. Anyone concurs? Uh, I get the same result. Huh? Okay, great. Thanks, everyone. So we move on to MBC now. MBC, the equation here is 16 EK theta B minus three. It's 16 EK theta B minus, which is this, then minus three, right? We can just forget about EK theta C. Should get a minus 4.26, right? With a wing and a prayer. <laughs> Is that it? Waiting anxiously. Yes, have minus four point two six. Okay, folks, we get a big thumbs up, right? It's one thumb. Okay, two thumbs up. So MCB now. Um, remember, we need that because, uh, yeah, that's a mid span moment. 8 EK theta B. Uh, I don't. Plus three. How much is that? Two point three seven. Two point three seven. Yes. Thirty seven. Okay. Anyone concurs? Yes, the same. Okay, great. Two thumbs up. So now we are near the end, and you see, only 
practice this with a few more examples. Get yourself familiarized with this. And you see, this is like the easiest thing in the world, way, way easier than the force method, uh, the force method, right? And you see, if you if you encounter the continuous beam like this and you need quick uh, calculation to verify the moment and the quick design, this is doing things like this is way quicker than you know turning on the computer and trying to create the model of a continuous beam, input the load, and so on and so. Okay, and and I what I really like about the hand calculation like this is that it gives you a big picture because you, you see everything uh, develop uh, with your own eyes. In computer program, when things become too overwhelming, you try to model a big structure. When things go wrong, you just cannot see it, okay? So let's say step number six, what's the, what's the name of step number six? Re reactions. Did you forget MCD? CD is minus 2.37, right? Because the, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's essentially the, the look at the equation. It just you you can you can tell right away without doing anything. You see, because you know EK is zero. So this is basically the same, but with the different sign sign, right? Okay, good. Thanks for helping. So we have this now. It's a support. And then you have the, uh, here is positive. So it means clockwise, 4.26. And then you have your uniform load, one ton per meter. And then the next span you have, um, now it's uh, negative. So it makes sense. looks reasonable to have the moment in this kind of direction, 2.37, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and calculate the, the reactions my way, you know? This is gonna be, the, oh, let's use different color, what's that? Hmm. So the green will be reaction due to the shear force, which is 0.5, right? And then the orange will be reaction due to the moment, which is going to be one down and one up. Notice that this is the couple in the uh, counterclockwise direction to counter this clockwise moment. And it is 4.26 over six, right? Simple, really. Life is kind of simple with structure, right? And here, that's one ton. So it's 0.5 again. See how the moment uh, creates a different effect. And now this guy is going to go up because 4.26 is greater than 2.37. So in the end, the total moment is in the counterclockwise. So we need clockwise couple. And this is basically 4.26 minus 2.37 over six. Voila, he's a cake. Any question? Guys gonna do well. Hypnotize yourself. We are okay, this is piece of cake. And you know, the rest is mirror image. And you know, every year, there'll be students drawing diagrams, the complete one of the symmetric structure and yet get it wrong. If it's symmetric, you just draw half and then fold it, right? Please. The world is already uh, sad enough. Okay, so don't add another sad story to it. Okay. Any question, please? Hmm. 
No. Okay, we uh, cover like two uh, examples very quickly. Now, um, we have five minutes before the break. And because I don't have the, you know, the end numbers, I am not going to be able to calculate the um, shear force bending moment diagram for you, but it seems to me, right, the shear is negative, right? Because 4.26, that's uh, about 0.7. So this is uh, negative shear, right? And negative shear will give you the negative bending and moment diagram. Oops, see that? Wrong shape. Too casual, right? Ooh. That's what you have here. Okay. And then for this, that's about, uh, that's going up. So the shear here is going to be bigger because uh, the, the, they two share the same uh, direction. So your, your shear force diagram should be more positive than negative. You see? This is like a good uh, approximation, guesstimate. Straight enough. And you begin with negative uh, 4.26 for sure. But because of the last area here, you may be able to get some positive moment before it comes down to minus 2.37 again. It's up to the shear. We have to check that. Okay? And that's it. Any question? No question. So we have a few minutes. So let's let's go over the next example to show you that uh, actually we are now getting to the frame naturally here. So we are going to begin with another example where you see uh, the main thing in this frame is that it cannot move to the side because we have the Restraint here in uh, X or, or horizontal direction. Oh. Okay, so this frame doesn't move uh, to the side. Uh, the main, the major thing that the has been added to our uh, consideration is that when, when you have the frame, you can have more than two members at one joint. In the continuous beams at one joint, you have two members. So right here, uh, you are going to have uh, three end moments to form your equilibrium equations. And that, that's it, okay? So we are going to begin this example in the next hour. Okay, um, any question before we have a break? Okay, there isn't any question. Right? Um, please remember to practice a little bit more, okay? You, you will see for yourself that this is not difficult. And I'm not saying that I'm good or anything, but when you see me do it, because you know you see people with, with solutions in mind do it, you think it's easy, yes. But until you do it, you cannot be sure that you will be able to do it. So do yourself a favor and try to practice by yourself, okay? Excuse me. Yes. Could you back to the step number six for the reaction calculation? Why do you have to wait so long? Oh, I think you, you must be doing some work yourself. Yeah. I see. Okay. This one, right? 0.5, it's just proportion, right? That you write because- it's Right, it's, 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 the, it's the reaction due to the, um, due to the vertical load itself. Uh -huh. So it's, it's just the WL over two, right? 
but it, uh, when we use the L, we put the six. Oh, oh you're there. right. L is I think three, right? So yeah, I L is six. It's not wrong. Yeah, how about that? How do you like that? You satisfied now? So right. So this one is wrong because uh, it's based on the wrong approximation. That's that's three up. Oh, so you're gonna have. Let me. Thanks a lot for pointing this out. So the shear is gonna go up and then come down. You certainly have positive mode. That's why I feel kind of strange not to have it. Okay, thanks. Don't forget to calculate this now. Positive moment, but I'm too lazy to do it. Okay, thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. All right. So uh, time for break now. Let's come back uh, one minute after ten thirty. All right.
guys, I'm around here in case you wanna ask me about something, anything. You don't make. You don't have to make it so official, you know. ถ้าจะต้องอุ่นตั้งแต่ชั่วโมง11โมงครึ่งแล้วทิ้งไว้รอลูกมากินนี่ควรจะยังไงครับอุณหภูมิ200ถ้าอุ่นสิบนาทีแล้วทิ้งไว้มันจะไหมไหมเนี่ยนะ Okay, nobody wants to talk to me. Oh, you know, I you heard me talking about the heating some food. Funny. Okay. In the meantime, let's uh, <clears throat> check stock market. Some fun. Mm. Okay, not bad. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. We still have a minute or two before we start another session. Okay. And now you know that uh, once I post the video, um. I'm gonna make it public, so you guys don't don't have to wait for me to you know say anything. Just go check on the channel right away, okay? But you see, the 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 main reason why I don't make it public from the beginning is is because of the mistake like that. That uh, PI just helped me correct. Always, you know. Because it's, it's human being. And we do live teaching, not just uh, recording with some video and then pose it, okay? Ah, where is it? Okay. How did, you, did I give you uh, all the four, exam, uh, four sets of example, volume one to four right away? Am I right? So you got all the four volumes, right? Now I got oh, one and two. Yeah, okay, but but uh, of uh, are all four posted or just one and two? 
remind me because I don't know. Sometimes I think, okay, I, let's 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 just post something for the midterm first, don't, so that it, it 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 it's not too overwhelming for you. But then when I do that, sometimes I forget. Good side and downside, you know. All right, so I think it's about time. So let, let us get into this one. Hmm. Um, oh, this is pretty old stuff. You know, I, uh, let me try to get to navigate through this somehow, okay? Um, I, like I mentioned, this is the, the, the first foray into the uh, frame thing. If you look at this, this is the topic of the, uh, oh, that's a size way, non size way frame, okay? A non size way means that uh, you have the frame that uh, has a see, sufficiently restrained against any lateral movement like this one, that becomes a restraint. So this frame is sufficiently restrained against lateral movement. Or oh, another case where you may not have the size of your problem is when you have a perfectly symmetric frame like this. If I give you a frame like this, and then the loading is also symmetric, there's no size way in this one. But the, the structure must be symmetric and the loading must be symmetric. In order to have symmetric structure, you have to have both conditions satisfied, right? Both the structure and the loading condition must be uh, symmetric. And if it's like this, you know, uh, it's gonna deform like that. Go to zero. There, okay. So no side sway. Other than that, it's gonna sway, man. So let's uh, let's let's check how things go, oh, how things are going with us. And uh, this example is so old that uh, I didn't even modify the simple end support here. But we 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 oh, we should all wait. So that means, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what's gonna be our unknown? Of course, this is the. Uh, Simple and support, right? Simple support, and it is also the end support. So it is a simple end support. So you can eliminate the rotation here. You don't have to calculate for it. So let's just say, um, let's name them uh, normally. So that becomes A, B, C, and D. Okay, so let's begin by, uh, say this is step number zero. So only one unknown, right? Which is say to B. Or you can say use modification. to eliminate, say that. See, I use the word eliminate. It doesn't mean that it's zero, okay? Step number one, relative stiffness. Yeah, right. So we now have KAB. It is 2i over 3 k e, uh, b c. Now the numbers become more confusing a little bit. 3i over 4 k c d. That's 2i over 2. So let's say k equal to i over six. 
Now I have KAB, it's four over six, right? So that becomes four K. Here is, mm, it's kind of tricky. That's 4.5. The least common number is actually 12, but I can afford to have 4.5. If you use a least common number of 12, you have eight and nine, and then this is six becomes 12, right? So you see, you can, you can use the, um, K uh, equals I over 12, excuse me, and, so that's going to become 8K, 9K, then 12K. In the end, the moment is going to be the same, whether or not, uh, regardless of what you use, you should say that, okay? So we move on to step number two, the calculation of, and you know, please be, be, be very careful with this step as well. If you, you know, you have a scar in your life with the least common number from your days in primary school, you can also use this right away as well. It doesn't hurt. And I would not think less of you if you cannot use the least common number, okay? But it gives me a better feeling if I do this because I, now I know which member is different than which and how much relatively. So you don't have to if you don't want to. So let's go ahead and calculate fix and moment, okay? To do it wrong in step number one, uh, relative stiffness, it means that you are solving a different structure and that is also fatal, okay? Now, um, fix and moment. This is another step where you should make sure that everything is correct because if you begin your journey in this slope deflection with the wrong fix and moment. Again, you are solving a wrong structure because the loading condition involves a fix and moment. If the fix and moment is wrong, it means that you, you're solving your structure with another load. Okay, so, and that is also fatal. Okay, here we go. F E M A B, that's gonna be equal to minus P, a, B square over L square, right? Remember that? And you should notice that, you know, when you calculate this, when the load is like this, this one is near A more than B. So fix and moment A, B should be greater than B, A. That should, that should be your common sense. So when you calculate this is minus and P is four. So A becomes uh, some, the, the number that you don't square, see? And then two, you square this. So PA, FEMAB is, is certainly is gonna be greater than uh, FEMBA because the load is uh, very close to A than B. And so you square the B instead because B, B becomes a bigger number. Okay, and don't forget to divide by three. That's a span length. And some, oh, let's make it better, three. And some forget to square, you know, in the end, this is moment. So you have, you, you have to have a load and one length, right? That's why it's A, B square over L square. In the end, you have one length as a unit. And that's a parentheses, not one. So that is minus 16 over nine meter. And if E M B A, it becomes positive now because it's clockwise. It's P A square B over L square. So that is four. See the, the shorter term now is square and the longer term is not square because the load is far away from B. So you're supposed to get less number here. That is eight, nine, ton meter. And then you have F E M B C that is minus 
it's, uh, it's the right formula right? from time to time. WL squared over 12. So that is minus W is 1.5. L is 4 over 12. That is minus 2 ton meter. And this equal to minus F. Oops. F E M C B. So we are done in terms of fixing moment. So it's now time to write the uh, slope deflection equation. Okay. So I don't write M uh, A B anymore. Let's start with M B A. BA. So that's going to be 3E, right? K is now 4K, and it is theta B minus psi, right? That's the correct formula. And then plus FEMBA, which is 8, 9 minus a half of minus 16 over nine divided by two. Did I get the formula correct? Yeah, three E I over L, three E K and set of J. So that is correct. So that becomes 12, E K theta D. This side term is zero, and that is uh, it becomes sixteen over nine. Am I correct? It's minus minus eight, so it's eight plus eight, so that's sixteen over nine. Then M B C now. MBC, that's uh, 4.5K, but it's 2E, 4.5K. Oops, oh, right, that's right. 2 theta B plus theta C minus 3 psi plus FEMBC, which is minus 2. Again, uh, because uh, we have the fixed support at C, right? So this guy is zero. That guy is also zero. So this becomes nine to that 18. E, K, theta, B, uh, minus two. And the next one, M, B, D, right? Yeah. So now we have 2E, K becomes a 6K. And you have 2 theta B plus theta D minus 3 psi. And this guy doesn't have any uh, fixed end moment. Right, uh, just go back and take a look at the uh, piece BD. See, it's just a, a column, it just stands there. So, no fixed end moment. And again, uh, this, oops, this guy is zero, and we don't have size sway. So this becomes, that's a uh, 12, 24, right? 24 EK theta. B. All right. And if you wish, I we can we can write the uh, MCB and MCD here because uh, you're gonna have to use them to to obtain moment 
the fixed point anyway, but they are not going to be the part of your uh, equilibrium equation, right? So M, let's try to write M, what is that? MCB, right? MCB is going to be equal to, because uh, it's going to be two theta C and then plus theta B, right? Uh, say this is going to be zero, size is going to be zero, and uh, moment is going to be plus. So, by doing things quickly, that is nine e k theta b plus two. Okay, and then you are going to have m d b two. That's uh, again, it's going to be swapped. So. Uh, you have two theta d plus theta b, but theta d is zero, and then it becomes two. So at uh, 12 e k theta b. Okay. Please notice this in the piece uh, b d. Um, let me rewrite this. It looks like a p. Sometimes when you write too long on the iPad, your, your handwriting becomes really bad. And it is already bad from the beginning, okay? So you see that uh, a piece BD, is nothing in there. It's gonna be useful for you in the future. You know, there's no load on BD, it's just the rotation here at the end. So when you have the rotation here, you see, notice that MBD is twice bigger than MDB, you see? It just, uh, the moment is there because the joint rotates, all right? So now we move on to equilibrium equations. Okay. Why do I have to add an S? Actually, we have one equation, right? That's uh, sigma MB with a zero. Knowing that, ah, okay, no S. We have M B A plus M B C plus M B D equal to zero. So now we just add them up. So that's uh, saying that's 12. That's 18, so that's 30, so that's 54, right? Am I right? Am I correct? Nobody is helping, that's fine. Okay, so that is... Um, correct. 18, 24. So 54, right? 54 EK uh, theta B. Um, minus two, though, that's 18. So we have minus two over nine equal to zero. Am I correct? Because that's uh, 18 over nine, right? So, say we have E K theta B equal to, Okay, that's nice. Exactly the same. Point zero zero uh, four one two radian, and it's a uh, clockwise. Okay, so now you can uh, go back and complete your end moment. See how easy that is, especially if you modify your support. So step number five: end moment. Uh, it may be at zero, without anything. 
um, MBA. I got the numbers, and because nobody's helping, so I'll just go ahead and say it. 1.83 ton meter. MBC. Uh, minus 1.93 ton meter. MBD, that's just 0.1 ton meter. MCB is 2.04 ton meter. And M db that's half of that right so it's 0 0.05 ton meter notice this this is uh you know when you don't have uh, a frame that's swaying notice the sigma moment here see the majority of the moment is in the you know the the elements that we normally call beams right the the vertical element bd it only takes this small amount of moment Okay, that's one thing. And uh, that's sigma MB, uh, it is going to be uh, zero, okay? So if you need to do the um, reaction, so let's do it quickly. Uh, it's four, five, and six, so one, two, three. Okay, it's fine. It doesn't align very well, but <laughs> it's not a big deal, right? And SFD and BMD, yeah, that as well. You know? So we have a uh, four member AB because MBA is 1.83, and you have the load four tons here. You can, you know, um, do a simple calculation, but let me uh, not repeat that, okay. And the uh, final no number here is 2.06. The same uh, procedure that you can repeat, 1.94. And the shear force diagram, just gonna look like this. And remember, there are still some students who still cannot draw the bending moment diagram in the members in frame. Um, this is positive, right? So this guy is going to give you the positive shear uh, moment. I'm sorry, for sure. That's a two point uh, because that's one meter, so the number is the same, two point oh six, and that is the negative area, which will bring the moment down to this value of minus one point eighty three. Okay, another member here, whereby you have. Uh, 1.93 and you have a uniform load and you have uh, 2.04 here quick calculation would uh, give you the uh, end reactions which is equal to 2.97 and 3.03 so now you know with that they're not going to be equal right um, 2.97 is slightly less, so you have the lower portion bigger. And this is, oops, it's a wrong one. This is the positive area, but you have the end moment of the negative uh, value. So you begin with um, minus 1.93. But this shear area is big enough, so it brings the bending moment diagram back up to the positive value about uh, 1.01. And then that negative area will bring uh, your moment diagram down to uh, that value, okay, minus 2.04, uh, okay. Another, uh, the, the column is nothing because it's uh, just that one. So depends on where you want to look. Um, you have um, 
point zero one is positive, so it's clockwise, right? And point uh, zero. Oh, excuse me. Oops, let's not do that. It's point one, right? Yep. And this is uh, also positive, so it's point zero five. Really tiny amount of things, really. And this is a uh, clockwise, so you need uh, counterclockwise shear. That's one point. 0.15 divided by the length. So your number is really, really tiny here. Yes. 0.075, uh, okay? And let's say the, uh, let's say your shear force diagram. And say that's uh, your bending moment diagram. Okay? So any question? Any question? Hello. Let me have some water. Well, this is straightforward enough, right? So I suppose. You may not have any questions. So now, the, the non size wave frame is just like beams, but for some joints, you can have more than two members. That's all. Okay. But now, in the real world, we do have the uh, side sway frame. Okay. So when the frame is going to sway, What's going to happen now? It means that it's just going to move to the side, right? Like that. Now this will have some rotation, so it's going to go like that. Now, the, the degree of freedom that we mentioned very earlier in the class will become very important now, because remember we used to say axial deformation is negligible. So that would give us the condition where this delta is equal to that delta. If you are saying that the axial deformation is not negligible, um, one thing that is gonna happen is that you cannot use the slope deflection to solve the structure because one of the assumptions, I don't know if I forget to mention or I have mentioned already, one of the assumptions of the slope deflection is that uh, uh, axial deformation must be negligible. There is no stiffness for axial uh, deformation in the slope deflection equation. If you are going to consider the axial deformation, you must have the term that will represent the stiffness for that in your equation. Generally, we can have that in the matrix and so and so. But for the purpose of the uh, analysis of the bending dominant structure, we can say the axial deformation is not of our concern. And in real life, it is really neg negligible uh, most of the time, okay? So because of that, we can reduce the, our unknown here to one. But remember, this guy is an unknown. So when you look at this structure, how many degree of freedom? Oh, quiet. Hey, remember we, we did this, right? How many degree of freedom when the axial deformation can be neglected? You have rotation here, rotation here, and one displacement, right? And we can say one displacement uh, because uh, this delta uh, are equal. So that you now have three degree of freedom. Still, 
this delta is degree freedom, which means you don't know how much it is. So when we go back and look at this example that I gave you, um, maybe last week, that last week, and this one, this is, uh, the first hour. You see this one. If the beam uh, has settlement, in this example, we can calculate psi because we know how much it goes. See, it, it's given, it's been prescribed that it goes down this much. But when it comes to side sway frame, now you actually do not know how much this is. So this, the displacement become unknown and it is better to rearrange it in the side term. So when you look at this, you can uh, connect this joint uh, here to here, and that becomes a straight line. And this is your psi, which is equal to delta over L. But still, it is an unknown. And now you should realize now that, say, you have two setas, and then and delta uh, and the psi term. The psi term in the slow deflection equation will not be zero anymore, so to speak. Three unknowns. To solve two displacements, now you have two uh, sigma moment equations, right? So now that you are going to need another one because you now have three unknowns. So where will that come from? Okay. Ready for another joyride? So let's take a look at the next example. Again, this is gonna be the life uh, solution of this problem because I don't see any solution anywhere. I must have put it somewhere. You know, it's perhaps uh, the exam given long time ago and I decided to include this into the class. So anyway, here we go. Now, step number zero, unknowns. What are they? Let's give them the name. A, B, B, C, and D. Tell me, what are the unknowns? Hey, you guys still there? Anyone? Or are you all falling asleep? Hello? Still here, huh? Still here. So can you possibly tell me what the unknowns are? Anyone aside from the part, perhaps? The key of freedom, right? Or just unknown? Yeah, yeah, they are the same. Oh, okay. Uh, theta B and theta C. Okay, so you get the most difficult one. How many degree of freedom actually? Degree of freedom, how many? Three. It's three, right? So what, what's another one? Delta B. Yeah, it's going to be delta. Okay, let's call it delta. That, that's enough. Thank you. So now we have three unknowns. Step number one, relative stiffness. Look at my handwriting. I think it's gone. Woo. So it's okay, right? Because you know we have because uh, it's i over five, all of them. It's okay. Step number two: fixed end moment. Ooh, what's the fixed end moment? Tell me. Ooh. 
Is this similar to example number six that we just went back and see? That is the load on the joint, right? Does it create fixed moment? It looks like, uh, one second, I think the cat is trying to catch the bird. One, one second. Point. Okay, so fix and moment, none, right? Oops, sorry. No fix and moment. Now, slope deflection equation. Okay. M, any question, maybe? Uh, let's try to just move it to the side so that we have enough space, okay? M, A, B now is going to be two E, K, two theta A, plus theta B, oh, my B is pretty difficult to write on iPad. Minus three, can I change a side to, let, 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 let us do it uh, somewhere else, okay? So here, maybe. Delta is equal to, oh, sorry, psi is equal to delta over five, okay? So we are going to have here minus three and then delta over five, okay? You know the reason why we, we need to change the psi term into the uh, delta in the next example, okay? So that's your MAB. Then MBA, again, it's two EK. Two theta b plus theta a minus the same thing. If you can recall, uh, please note that when your member wants to go like this, and you have the resisting moment, it is going back in another direction. And they should be equal, right? Because we're talking about the joint uh, displacement of the member without any load on the member. So this moment will always be equal in the same direction per one member. So don't be surprised to see that we have uh, this term equal. And I should um, go ahead and say this guy is zero. That guy is zero, okay? Now, entering the most common mistake for many students. When you consider moment, uh, member B, C, remember it is joint B and C that move. So this becomes the delta on your member A, B, and C, D. Member B, C, even though I may have drawn the deflected shape like this, see? Member BC itself stay on the horizontal uh, level, but it has rotations at both ends. So member BC does not have the delta on it. You see, member BC will not have the delta term on it. So it becomes 2EK to theta B plus theta C. M C B becomes two E K to theta C plus theta B. M, 
CB now at okay, another two EK, two theta C plus theta D, but this is member CD, which is again, it's going like this, right? It's going like this. So we are going to have the uh, psi term in member CD again, just like member AB. That becomes minus three and the psi can be written in the delta term and that's equal to member AB and it is delta over five. And MDC, that is two E K two theta D plus theta C minus three psi over five. And theta D is zero, right? Now it's equilibrium equation. I try to um, put them in the uh, same page. So let's say step number four, equilibrium equation. The first one is gonna be uh, pretty obvious. That is gonna be sigma m b equal to zero, right? Now you see sigma m b, that it's gonna consist of this. One. Okay, some just want to you know add this guy up, which is kind of crazy. Okay, sigma mb is going to be zero, and now you can say um, okay, somewhere here, m that's mba plus mbc equal to zero, and. Okay, I should uh, pull this out, right? That is four E K theta B minus, um, that's six, right? That's 1.2, okay? It's, it's six over five, so it's six E K delta over five, so it's 1.2. This guy is four E K theta B plus two E K uh, theta C. So, okay, um, that's gonna be eight E K theta B plus Okay, that's not a good point to write because uh, I'm gonna run out of space. Let's put it down here. Eight e k theta b um, plus two e k theta c minus one point two e k delta equal to zero. That's your first equation. Next is sigma m c equal to zero. So you're going to have m c b plus m c d equal to zero. So let's uh, do this c b. That's um, pretty much the same. So it's four e k theta b, or two e k theta b, sorry. Yeah, plus four e k theta c. And then this guy is going to come out similarly. Because it's C together, let me write down here for E K theta C minus uh, one point two E K. Oh, geez. Then yeah, let me write this right again. My oh, sorry. Minus one point two E. K delta. So okay, it's a similarity in it. So that one is going to be two e k theta b plus eight e k theta c 
minus 1.2 ek delta equal to zero. Okay. Now another one would be a troublesome. You see, you should notice one thing. When we are trying to solve rotation, we use moment equation, correct? So when we are trying to solve displacement, do you think what we should do? Or what equation we should use? Is there any equation left that we can use? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we need to break some space here. We can use sigma fx equal to zero because it's a force in x direction, which involves the displacement in x direction. So it's sigma fx equal to zero. And how are we going to get that? We are going to get it from this. When you look at the member, you now, uh, you have clockwise moment. That's MBA. That's MAB, right? So now I can obtain VA. Or I can just say to reduce confusion, RA. And from this, that's MC. D, that's M, D, C. From this, I get R, uh, D. And my sigma Fx is simply R, A plus R, uh, D. Uh, that's in a different direction, right? Minus, is that 40? Equal to zero. Right. Okay. So now we have MAB and we have MBA, right? So certainly we can uh, finish our job here. RA is MAB plus MBA divided by five, right? And likewise, RD is MCD plus MDC divided by five as well. A lot of work ahead, but it's not that difficult, is it? All right. So, I think uh, the time has come for another break. So it would be quite uh, some process before we can get this done. But you, you can wish to complete this before the break because I, I, I'm doing this live. I don't have any solution with me. It means I have to solve the simultaneous equations, which I cannot. So after I establish the equations, I think I'm just going to stop. So let's say... You want me to finish this uh, right away? Takes like a few minutes. Yeah. Okay, great. That's good. I like that very much from you guys. So let's go back here and see. We have MAB and MBA already. So please notice how uh, we can use the equation to, to obtain the reaction or the shear force. See, now it is going to be the moment equation in the one member. Okay, so this becomes 2EK uh, theta B minus 1.2EK delta. Okay, and likewise here, it's gonna be um, 2EK uh, theta C minus 1.2EK delta. So it has a similarity, if you can notice. 
So this, uh, we, when you add them up, it's going to be six EK, say to be minus 2.4, right? So here is uh, RA is going to be equal to, how much? Again, I just said that. Um, six and minus 2.4, right? Six E K theta B minus 2.4 E K delta over five. And R B, R D, I'm sorry. That's gonna be six E K delta C minus 2.4. Am I right? Um, e k uh, delta over five. Okay, and now your sigma f is equal to zero will give you. Now you have one. That's one point two, right? E k say to B plus 1.2 EK say to C minus, uh, that's a similar, so it's 4.8 over five of EK uh, delta minus 40 equal to zero. So here we are, we have three equations. One and two, and this is the third one. Notice this, if I move 40 here to the opposite side, I can now write this in the matrix form, okay? Just to show you the, how things are arranged, so that's eight. From the first equation, eight, two, and minus 1.2. The second one is two, eight, minus 1.2, the third one is 1.2 and 1.2 and minus 4.8 over five. This is EK uh, theta B, EK theta C and EK delta. That is gonna be equal to 0, 0, and 40. Notice that. See, if you have something like that, wow, we are in a very, very good shape. And this course is the stiffness matrix. Go ahead and solve this. You're gonna get EK set of B, EK set of C, and EK delta. Okay. So is there any question? A little bit more work to solve the uh, side sway problem. Okay, let me uh, stop the record. It's getting long, this one.